it has just got such a stunning simplicity to it. It is absolutely beautiful. It has a serenely peaceful graveyard. We're right in the centre of the city, but it is incredibly quiet here. You know, you, I can't begin to kind of uh, get across to you. In fact, if I shut up, all you can hear actually is the aircon working. So it sort of rather kind of defeats the point. But it's a great one listed building. It's one of the most important. Bring to win in the tower, absolutely good spot, Jim. So this is the most important type of grading you possibly get. And it's really kind of one of York's hidden treasures. So there's an archway through here. So we'll come out this way, and at the end of the tour, I'll show you the row of houses that it kind of forms part of. The oldest row of houses in York, that's these. They date from 1316, Our Lady's Row. So we'll show you those from the kind of front as well. So it really is, even though it's very, very central, at the same time, it is off the beaten track, which is quite remarkable. It does do the kind of same things. Absolutely, look at this huge bell outside, ring for peace. So once we step away from Goodrum Gate, which is a very busy street, um, the archway is the 18th century, um, but the church itself um, is absolutely medieval. And very little has changed. Uh, say, John Betjeman described it as a delightful med medley of different materials, colours and textures. Um, and, and some of it really is due to the quality of the repair work, actually, and the patching up has brought it right into way. But look at everything you look at. It just lovely. So we think the building dates from about 1250, these earliest parts, and again, late 15th century. And there's obviously a variety of, of kind of building elements in it. And I've got to walk around, because in some places, the, the signal isn't at all it should be. When I came down here and did some testing um, the other week, it, it seemed a little bit better on this side. So we'll kind of stick to this side. So this is what we're talking about in terms of box pews. So box pews were very, very popular, but they almost ripped out. And they, 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 were, they were very, very um, popular in ring the bell on the way out yeah for a couple of reasons firstly it gave you some measure of privacy but also you can imagine so this is a box pew so, so basically you can rent out a space get the drafts out and because of course these weren't heated spaces this was you know very very good and obviously you where you were in relation to to the pulpit would in of course your statue and people paid rent for these spaces so, so they were um you know, the, the, this was something, you know, part of your, your contribution to the parish. But aren't they wonderful? But as I say, they massively went out of fa fashion um, in, in the sort of 18th and 19th centuries. And so almost every church, they just kind of ripped them out. So funny enough, the other one um, where it's got me, St Mary's, you know, the church at the top of the, of the, the mound there at Whitby that we go to, they've got box pews as well. But um, they're, they're incredibly sparse. So they just don't really exist anymore. Um, but the, look, just look at the, the, the slope of the, of the floor here. Uh, again, just ground movement, settlement, historic, but it's just age. Much warmer, absolutely, Marlene, you know, and of course that was, that was an issue. You know, keeping warm was a challenge in these sort of places. <laughs> Not very fond memories, Lynn has a Sunday school there, so we've got a lovely old font here to the rear of the church. So initially this would have been a sort of very simple, smaller church, but when it was expanded, it was obviously very successful, kind of very well endowed over the years. But isn't it between, you see here, the candles, like I say, there is no main electricity in the main body of the church. So consequently, during the services on an evening, these are lit up. And I can't describe to you how beautiful this looks. Yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't keep very warm in here. And uh, I, I've, heard, I've heard singing in here as well. And, and the, 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 the sonic, the acoustic quality of this space is absolutely remarkable. It just bounces off of so only certain people were allowed in the pews, says Lynn, and she wasn't one of them, so she wasn't on the preferred list. But isn't it just something? Oh, it's dawn and, and sort of twilight as well. You know, as the kind of light is going down, it, uh, it, it beautifully lights up, and of course then the glinting in, in, in the shadows of the windows and so forth. So, you know, this is... There's a church in Port Macquarie in New South Wales, a box piece. Isn't that unusual? Well, I guess that must have been the fashion when they left England. So they probably built it as it would have been. But of course, by the end of, you know, that century, they're being ripped out left, right and centre. To fit more people in, I guess, you know, I suppose, you know, it, it's a lot easier. Steve was here 10 days ago, gorgeous church, it absolutely is. And of course, you've got various sort of family crests of people that were associated us. This is in memory of the Reverend James Darlin, who was the rector of this church, died 
the 20th of November, 1838. So there are all round places, if you like, to, to commemorate people who've served. But again, fantastic quality of stained glass that we have in abundance in York is again on display here. And as I say, the reason I love parachute just so much is the ability to come up close, bring it right in to the stained glass. Because as wonderful as the mint is, it's all so high up that you can't get to look at it in the eye. Whereas here, just give it a little bit of zoom. We're able to look and behold the medieval stained glass. Close up. Joyce, colour, detail. Yes. Okay, so you're good to join us. So let's just flip around, just go off Zoom for a portrait shot. So close your eyes if you get the motion sickness. Just whiz that around. Beautiful light. Sue, so you're most welcome. Hi, Rishi. Good to join us. We're pretty much coming to the end of this tour. We'll be out again tomorrow between two and four. So if you want to see more of York Unlocked, or of some of York's magnificent buildings. Now, when we were in All Saints North Street, I was talking a bit about the name of this church, Sam, is Holy Trinity, Goodrum Gates, in York. We were talking about the written word, the scriptures. It's a really, really important part of the Reformation when we transitioned from being a Catholic country to being a Protestant one, was that suddenly Bibles and the scripture were in English. Before this time, it's all in Latin. You didn't understand it, you weren't meant to understand it. So from this point onwards, it was recognised that it was your job to, to recite prayers. So we see here the words, I believe in God the Father, the almighty maker of heaven and earth. This was now... Um, so you, you, you recited. You didn't just listen to the priest doing it. You took part, so it was a much more active form of faith. You expected to have literacy skills. You were able to read, you were able to study the scriptures. So it was a really, really profound change on society was the Reformation. Sacred religious, absolutely just so the signal's better up there. So I'm sort of slightly pat fighting a bit of patchy, so I'll just try and so again we've got the Ten Commandments running through the middle. So we've got scripture, we've got prayer. Well the 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 Lord's Prayer there, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. I can't get on with the modern version of the Lord's Prayer, as we said. It's probably my age, but um, the modern English version just don't do it for me. There's something about the majesty of the language. So again, stunning light coming through. And again, portrayal, I think there's St. Michael with the dragon on the left-hand side. I haven't got the guide in front of me, so I can't tell you precisely who all the saints are, but I'm pretty sure that is St. Michael. And again, that looks like that's St. Christopher again. We've got the child Christ on his shoulder. So, so come down. Myself. What we have done here again as well is a, a signal's not great, so I'm, I'm in a bit of a, a, a squint, which was a way of seeing in the side of it. And we believe that this was for the purpose of lepers. So, lepers, of course, contagious diseases were allowed into the church, but only to access from behind a wall using a squint so they could see what was going on at the altar. Isn't that fabulous? So the signal's okay here. So again, we've got various... I agree, George, yeah, the, the, the OC and George, yeah, the flow of the words just don't work quite so well. In fact, say we, we were taught these things. We, we recited them and learned them by heart. Um, absolutely kind of since it allowed them to, to attend Mass because, of course... Um, it's not a quick death leprosy. You know, you could have leprosy for 20 years before you would die. Most people didn't. But, uh, you know, so consequently, it wasn't just a case if you contract leprosy like the plague and die very, very quickly. So consequently, the ability to have some religious observances was very important uh, for what's obviously going to happen to them in the next life. So, um, so yes, it's a, yes, a nasty disease, lepr leprosy. It's a horrible sort of a decaying disease, isn't it? You know, we, uh, we tend to focus on the kind of extreme element of it, but, but you know, a lot of it sort of a, attacks the autoimmune system, doesn't it? And it's a very, very nasty. But aren't these beautiful? The simplicity of these 
Kansas, Candelabra. Absolutely wonderful. So go outside, I think. We'll just have, I'll show you the, the kind of graveyard because it, it's such a lovely place. You can see here scrolls to various Lord Mayors, Thomas Mosey, Robert Fairfax, James Rowe, Richard Garland. So let's take it outside and, uh, and just show you how lovely graveyard there's here. So, we said about the belt. Yeah. But it's a fantastic space, and just so peaceful. Especially as for lepers called laser houses. So, again, it's just a very small church, you know, very, very kind of modest. And again, look at that blue sky up against it. It looks absolutely kind of magnificent. So it's rather nice for us to just sort of see it from the outside. And this is a place that I used to frequently come and eat my lunch when I worked in Central York. Um, come sit down here. A very kind of peaceful place to, to come and kind of hang out. And uh, come around the corner, being York, as soon as you get a gap, most places you can see a bit of the Minster. So we've got a bit of the Minster poking out at the top. You have to go to work, brilliant. See this. Yeah, absolutely. If you, if you go to work, then it's just a nice place to say, very central, but very quiet. So you can just come and have your lunch here. And uh, you know, that's what I would I just enjoy. Oh, we can't get around the, the, the rope. I'll have to go back around the way. But that's all right, because we'll show you the front of this building. So we're very near the end of this tour now. We've been on quite some time, almost two hours. And uh, my phone is starting to tell me that it's, uh, its batteries are coming towards a dotage, as you might say. So let's take us around to the front of it so you can sort of see this building in context and you can see where it's located actually within York. So I mentioned earlier that it's a place that is now sort of a place for semi pilgrimage, or what is it, one of a better description, owing to its link with, uh, with Anne Lister and Anne Walker. So I'll come and show you now the plaque. It's lovely. Look at the colours of that. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? The foliage there is so pink. Beautiful. Look at that. It could be on Erico's tour, that couldn't it? It's so vibrant. Isn't that just something? So this is the 18th century gateway, the archway. Next door, so, excuse me, I'm just going there. So there is a plaque look for Anne Lister. So she, she was resident, obviously, of Sheepman Hall in Halifax, but spent a great deal of time in New York, not least because York was a lot more cosmopolitan. I'm thinking Anne Lister, because she's very wealthy, so you know, behind closed doors she was able really to kind of enjoy... Um, a much greater degree of privacy compared to the provincial Halifax. Um, so again, the signal isn't great here, so we're not going to linger too long. There's a lot of people now. But this is where he sits in. So you can see here, this is Our Lady's Row. It is uh, the oldest continuous row of housing anywhere in York. So just see. If you go down. And this is why it's so easy to miss that church, because that's the entrance there, look. And then on it. So it's so easy to walk past. Those that live in York, of course, will know uh, about it. But for visitors, if you don't know it's there, you can see now how easy it is to pass by. So we're kind of right in the heart of the centre. 